Hello all, by now you should have a copy of a PDF which uh, shares with you all of our um, number crunching up to date. I just want to give you a quick overview of how to interpret some of what's in front of you. Starting off with a frequency table. After um, conducting the survey, we scanned the completed surveys and uh, Byrne entered the transpose that did it into digital format and we began crunching these numbers. Uh, starting off with the frequency table. Um, you'll see here at the top of each little box count is a six character rendering of the question. So this one is section one, part one, question one. See very, um, the responses were limited to only four and five so um, there's not a lot of range here and only those response numbers are indicated. You can see here what the frequency of those counts are. Since only 14 students um, participated in the survey last Thursday, that is our total there. Um, again, the percent breakdown and a cumulative percentage. Here in question two, there's more range and responses, so we have um, uh, that replicated here in the count, and uh, some of the rest of this information takes a little more meaning, particularly the cumulative percentage increasing. So we did that for every ordinal level question that is um, a scaled question in the survey, um, and calculated those frequencies. We then went and looked at descriptives. So on this descriptive table, you'll see in the upper left-hand corner the calibrated mean. Um, in row one is the question category. So questions with skills are intended to measure um, student experience related to skills um, with Bridge. And then again, you'll see the six character uh, rendering of the question um, immediately below that. So the two columns I want to look at are the mean and standard deviation. You'll see those are the colored ones. Um, the mean here is conditionally formatted. The more saturated the green, the farther the average response for that question deviates positively from the calibrated mean. And the more saturated the red, the more um, it uh, deviates negatively from that calibrated mean. The standard deviation, however, is only one color. Um, the saturation of red indicates the volatility. Um, so those with high standard deviations have a very red color associated with them. Next, we'll take a look at the correlation table here. So a little bit about how this works. You see both the vertical and horizontal axis. Again, similarly, similarly to the descriptive pages, um, this indicates the category that corresponds to each question. And then there's a six character uh, rendering of that question here so you can identify it. Um, this table uh, indicates the correlation for all questions, all uh, quantitative uh, ordinal level questions on the survey here. Um, the way this works is you would identify a question you want here, we'll say question 11, and then you would locate the um, question you want to measure it against, and then where those two, where the column and rows intersect is the correlation for um, those two questions. Um, the way the conditional formatting is formulated is that uh, anything exhibiting a strength um, at, uh, of an absolute value of 0.7 or greater uh, from zero is highlighted in red, indicating a strong correlation. So part of the way you can help to understand this is when you understand the table is if when you measure a question against itself you're going to see perfect correlation obviously um, indicated right here but what we really want to take a look at here are these bottom rows particularly the um, the one on the absolute bottom. This is what we looked at and identified as our baseline indicator for overall satisfaction in the program. So it's particularly important to us or those that are indicated red in this row. 
Um, so we look at that, when we break it down, we see that there's a high concentration of correlation, strong correlation, among um, items in the skills section. And in fact, when we measure out the section scores against the calibrated average, um, we see interestingly here that skills, um, though demonstrating a strong correlation, is actually uh, an area that rated below the calibrated average. All right, let's take a quick look at this one. Um, this is the response to question five in section three. <clears throat> um, I, I'm not sure the, the way to present this or to illustrate this most effectively. I think intuitively when you come to this kind of a bar chart, um, it's in one's intuitive nature to think that these columns are measurable against one another, um, and in some respects they are, but to remember that these are not, um, it may not be the best way to illustrate that information. Um, so the way that they're configured here and illustrated is not by a full measurable value or frequency, but instead they're represented by the percent of the student population who selected that category. So you see here for networking, um, this choice was selected by uh, over 70% of respondents. But important to note that, that selecting networking does not preclude them from selecting any of the other options on this survey. So it's something going forward we want to think about what does this information really tell us? Um, what kind of argument or story can be told from this? And most interestingly to me at this point is how do we illustrate that point uh, most effectively? Uh, one last note, I wanted to wish you all a good night. Um, I hope that some of this stuff was helpful to you. Um, please definitely reach out uh, to, with any questions or anything like that. I look forward to hearing from you all. All right, take care.